Gospel of Matthew tonight, chapter 13. If you found your place there, let's go ahead and stand since we did so much sitting. <laughs> since Brother Sonny's going to be the good guy, I'm going to be the bad guy. All right, Matthew chapter 13, beginning with verse number 10. And the disciples came and said unto Jesus, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they, see, they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, or Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Look back at verse number 9, and this is how he concluded the parable of the sower. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much uh, again for the privilege of meeting together tonight in your name. Lord, I just ask you to just take over the services. Please empty me of self. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, please speak to us through your word tonight. Help the message be very clear. Uh, Lord, help it, help it to benefit us tonight. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Appreciate that. The title of the message tonight is Why Parables? Why parables? We uh, Sunday, we looked three times at the parable of the sower. We looked at some different aspects of it. And Lord willing, I've got one more in mind uh, for the parable of the sower. Uh, but uh, I, I wanted to address this part right in between. Right in between here. Uh, Luke's gospel includes some of this information, but Matthew's gospel is the he, he expounds on it the most uh, about here Jesus entered into a ship and a, a people stood on the seashore and Jesus began to teach them in parables. And a little while later, the disciples came to him in private and said, "Why are you doing that?" And then the thing I love about this parable is Jesus explains it. He doesn't explain all of his parables, but he explains this one, and we didn't. We, if you start in verse 18 through 23, he explains what he means by the parable of the sower. But uh, tonight I wanted to focus in on, on why parables. Why parables? Because, I don't know about you, but uh, it kind of catches me off guard the way... This parable, I mean, Jesus teaches in something. He, he, I'm sorry, I've got a gnat flying around me. But uh, he, uh, he, why muddy the water? Okay, as a as a preacher, as a teacher, um, one of my jobs is to make something as clear as I possibly can. And sometimes that's difficult. Clear as mud, right? Um, that's been something that's been probably the greatest challenge to me is uh, as a preacher or teacher, and I've, I've really enjoyed the Lord growing me in that area. I believe He has. But you take a truth and you try to break it down and make it where everybody can chew it up and swallow it. And uh, you try to make it where everybody can, can digest it. Uh, you don't want to go over people's head, right? I mean, would the preachers in the room agree with me? Yeah. yeah. Anybody that's ever stood before people, you want them to get the truth that you are bringing, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Sunday school teachers, right? When you're teaching little kids, and you want to make sure that they get what you're saying. So this is kind of odd to me. You know, 
Because if I, you know, let's, let's give Jesus some advice, right? Let's tell him how to do things. Jesus, you shouldn't teach in parables. They're not going to understand you. You shouldn't, you shouldn't dirty the water anymore, right? You should, you should clear it up. You should, you, should just, you should just tell them just straight facts and don't, don't make it complicated, Jesus. Just, you know, in our human nature, that might be some advice we'd give to a preacher, right? That might be some advice we, would, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't do that to Jesus. His disciples were not coming to him going, you know, you really shouldn't do that. They were just wondering why he was doing it. Okay, I don't pick up here that they were they were telling him uh, you shouldn't teach in parables. Then again, Peter told him not to go to the cross, so I wouldn't put it past them to do something like that. But uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, it, it just why do that? Why, why teach in parables? Why make it? Why overcomplicate the truth that you're giving the people? Why do that? Why not just tell them straight, straight up what you mean? And uh, so the, the disciples come and ask him that, and he answers. He answers why. Beginning, uh, let, let me say this, the first point I want to bring out is verse number 10. The disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto, him, unto them in parables? Je let me say this, Jesus' will and Jesus' methods don't always make sense to us. They didn't make sense to the to the twelve here. Okay, so we're in good company. If you ever get a little confused about what the Lord is doing, <laughs> uh, I've got a book on my shelf that is probably the next one I'm going to read, and it's what in the world is going on, <laughs> and it, it's it's written by a preacher and. He's talking about what is going on today uh, in our culture and things like that. But, uh, you know, listen, if you, if you ever get confused about what Jesus is doing, I hear people all the time say, well, if Jesus was in that ministry, or if Jesus was in that, then why would this happen? Or why would that happen? Really, we've got to stop and think about it. If the devil isn't hitting you, are you really sure you're in Jesus' will? That would be more of the question to ask. Because if you're in the will of God, you are going to get targeted. Things are going to happen. Amen. I, don't, I don't think that the Lord's going to let more come on you than, than you can handle unless you choose that. But uh, we can overwhelm ourselves. But, uh, you know, if we're in the will of God, stuff's still going to happen to us. I mean, read your Bible. Elijah didn't have a perfect life. Moses didn't have a perfect life. Uh, Jonah did not have a perfect life. Jonah got an assignment that he did not want. So, I mean, you know, you're going to have uh, all kinds of things being in the will of God. It's not always going to make sense to us. In fact, it possibly rarely will. Yeah. That's possible. It's very possible. Being in the will of God uh, might not always make sense to us. And His methods might not always make sense to us. They just might not. And we've got to be okay with that. We've got to say, I don't understand exactly what's going on, but I trust you. Yeah. And we've got to we've got to come to that point. We've got to stay at that point. We've got to stay there. Now that's that. It's one thing to say that, and it's another thing to do it. But yeah. we've got to try to trust the Lord in whatever's going on. Amen. I think some stuff's coming in in, in the world, and uh, our our trust is going to be tested. We're going to have to we're going to have to trust the Lord. That's right. In in verse number eleven. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Uh, let me say this. Jesus doesn't owe us anything. He doesn't have to explain himself if he doesn't want to. Although he has. He's explained himself very well. If we choose to look, if we want to know, uh, he's explained himself very well. I, you know, here he says to the disciples, it is given unto them to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Do you know, and, and I got into this a little bit during Sunday school, I wasn't trying to overlap, but we read the whole passage and I couldn't skip over this, but, you know, you really can't understand spiritual things <clears throat> until you've got the Holy Spirit of God teaching you. That's right, yeah. That's right. You really can't. That's 
try to explain spiritual things to worldly people and they just, they don't, it, it tends, I mean, you really have to break it down for them. Little bite-sized pieces, you really do. And even then, they can still go right, they can choke on it. And so, listen, he's saying to the, he's saying, look, it's, it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm so glad that as a child of God, we can understand the mysteries of the kingdom. We have all we need. We have the Holy Spirit of God. We, we can pray and ask God to reveal things to us and show us things through His Word and explain Himself. I can't tell you how many times I've got hung up on a passage, not understood what in the world's going on in this passage, and then prayed about it, and then it clicked. I, can't, I really can't. I have lost count of how many times that's happened. It's amazing. That's all it took. I just have to ask. Well, that's cool. Just have the Holy Spirit and He reveals something to you? That's pretty neat. Uh, you know, so there have been times where He's done that instantaneously. There's been times where He'll do it over time. You know, later on, maybe a year later, it'll click. I'm like, whoa, okay. And it's, it's, it's as if God right then is going, you remember that question? Here's the answer. And it's so clear. It's, it's as clear. It, it's, it's as if He's saying it right there. Notice that verse right there, Joe. Notice that verse. There's your answer. You had a question. There's your answer. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Listen, it is. I'm so thankful that that it, that God gives us answers. He's giving us answers. He's given us a, a lot more than what we deserve. We don't have to know all this stuff. You look at the Old Testament and the people that lived back then. Job did not have all the answers when he went through what he was going through. He didn't have the book of Genesis. He didn't have the, the Torah. He didn't have Jeremiah. He didn't have the prophets. He didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He didn't have the Apostle Paul. He just had faith. He just had faith. What word of mouth, what he had heard from Adam and Eve and, and you know, the generations uh, going before him. He didn't have all that. I tell you what, it's been given unto us. Listen, he, 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 said, uh, he said in verse 17, Verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see. Hey, we are, we've been, we are in a privileged position. I don't think there's been people on earth more privileged than, than Christians of today. The amount that we have at our fingertips. And we're, we're very complacent. Just to, I'm, just, I'm not saying all Christians are. I'm just saying as a general rule, it just seems like the majority are complacent. Apathy is creeping in. And uh, I mean, we, it's just it's what happens. God is so good to His people. And then we become spoiled. And then, and then we wander off from Him. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. That tends to be Christians in a nutshell. They said it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Who's them? Unto them it is not given to know the mysteries. He goes on, he says in verse 12, For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. And, and I believe that, uh, that principle, that's a biblical principle, that applies everywhere. Okay, can I tell you, natural man doesn't agree with that. Natural man says, sorry, this gnat is killing me. Natural man says, hey, I don't have, so I'm a have not, let me steal from the haves. That's what natural man says. Natural man says, I didn't work for it, but I should have it anyway. That's man's nature. And you're seeing man's nature all throughout America today. Uh, it, it's envy and greed, and, and that's man's nature. But can I tell you, and, and this principle applies in so many different ways. You take somebody who's got a lot of money, they start investing it, guess what they're going to get more of? Money. Because they have... And they're lending it out, and they're and they're and it's growing, and you'll see it multiply. That that principle applies in finances. It does. Uh, to stop that principle, you actually have to steal from that guy. You would actually have to do that. I'm just saying that that's just common sense. 
you would have to steal from him. Or he'd have to be foolish and make bad investments or something of that nature. But I believe what this is talking about, I believe the main thing he's talking about right here is the Holy Spirit of God. If you have the Holy Spirit of God, if, let me say it like this, if you have salvation, if you have the salvation of your soul, guess what? It won't ever stop. Like, you're, you're, God is not, you're not going to outgive God. All right? He's going to keep giving you and giving you and, and giving to you and giving to you. He's going to keep blessing you and blessing you. I am not, it can be financially, but I'm not talking necessarily about that. I'm talking about like peace and joy and love. I'm talking about, hey, listen, there's going to be rewards in heaven. We are not going to outgive God. Listen, what, who, what was the difference in verse 11? Well, here's the disciples, they're saved. Here was some lost people listening to the message. One's a group of haves. They have salvation. They have the Holy Spirit of God. The other group's a group of have-nots. And this group is going to walk around blind. This group is not going to see. Even though they've got eyes to see, they're not going to see. And even though they've got ears to hear, they're not going to hear. They're not going to really hear. They don't hear spiritual things. They don't see spiritual things. All they see is carnal things. All they hear is what is, is physical things. That's all, that's all they've got on their mind. That's all they can comprehend. But the haves, they've got the Holy Spirit of God saying things to them. Amen. They've got the Word of God going on in their heart and going on in their mind. And, and when things happen in their life, they filter it. It goes through a filter. And the Holy Spirit of God starts pointing out, now here's how you take that. Mm. Carnal people don't have that. John, I'm going to pick on Johnny. I'm not really picking on her, but she's constantly asking me, Joe, why do, why do family members, why do friends, why, why are they going in the directions they're going in? Because they don't have. I, I mean, I hope they're saved. I hope they're just ignoring the voice. I hope they're ignoring the Holy Spirit. That's bad enough. I mean, that's better than not having the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. Right. But uh, a lot of times they don't have. They don't, they're not, they're not, uh, when, when things are happening in their life, they're not filtering it through the Holy Spirit of God. They're not, they don't have that Holy Spirit going, mm, don't go that direction. You belong to me. You go that direction, there's going to be some pain. There's going to be some tough times. They don't have that. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. See, think about this. If you have the Holy Spirit of God, you're going to heaven. You're done, that's a done deal. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. So you're going to heaven. Yep. You go to heaven... Life is just going to get better and better every day. Like, you won't have bad days. I'm, I'm reading a book right now, and, uh, and one of the chapters is on heaven. And man, it's exciting. It is exciting, the things that possibly are coming in heaven. Uh, we know some things for sure, but a lot of it, I mean, we're speculating. And things. I, I, hey, I can't, I'm, I'm on a diet. And I'm doing good. I've lost 11 pounds. Brother Mark, air high five. Uh, yeah, cheer me on. Uh, but you know, I'm looking forward to having a new body where I can eat whatever I want as much as I want and not gain a pound. Yes. Perfect metabolism. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. I, I don't know that. I just know Jesus ate. He ate food. I'm just going on what he did. And I... I think we're gonna. I think heaven, heavenly food. Uh, one thing the the author uh, said in his chapter on, on heaven. He said, "I wonder what angelic cooks, what uh, angelic food will taste like, and perhaps we'll get to taste manna and things like that." Hey, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm looking forward to it. That's gonna be pretty neat. Uh, that's gonna be amazing. Uh, listen. Whosoever hath to him, it's just going to get better and better and better. Yeah. It's just going to get better and better and better. Yeah. I'm so thankful for that. Yep. I'm so thankful that it's not just this life. Yeah. 
Because if it's just this life, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Even if you're bettering yourself, it's still getting worse and worse and worse because you're, you're not getting any younger. It's still not getting, you know, still not getting, you're just wrestling, you're just, it's just frustration. I'm so thankful that if you have the Holy Spirit of God, it's just going to get better and better and better. But if you have not, it will just get worse and worse and worse. That's a really sad truth, isn't it? As better as it's going to get for the believer is how worse it's going to get for the non-believer. Look at, you know, I have to be careful when I'm studying Judas's life because it will be depressing. But when you study Judas's life, boy, it starts off good. He's got all the promise in the world. He's got the best teacher to ever walk the earth. Boy, he's been, that's a gift. You talk about an opportunity. But he didn't receive Jesus. He didn't receive the Holy Spirit of God. He did not receive salvation. So what happened to him? <laughs> even what he had, <coughs> even the opportunities that he had were taken away. And his life got worse and worse to the point where he committed suicide. Do you think he got better after that? Jesus said it would have been better had he not been born. Why? Because his life's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Forever. It's a very sobering thought, is it not? It's good when it comes to salvation to be a have. Amen? Yeah. To be a have. Because it says, from Whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. I pointed this out. Listen, lost people, when they, when they die, are going to leave everything they have behind. That's right. Because honestly, if they really stop and thought about it, it doesn't belong to them. It never did. Even saying, but really, a lot of our possessions, we are just stewards of someone else's goods. That's it. That's why he's saying, I'm teaching in parables. I'm teaching in parables. You, you got your answer yet? Look at verse 13. He said, therefore I speak to them in parables. This is why. Because they seeing, see not. In hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. And then he explains, listen, we, we could stop right there, we could go, wow, he's being kind of harsh. If they don't understand, why not explain it to them? We could stop and say that, right? I, I wouldn't advise it, I'm just simply saying, we could. But then he goes on and explains further in verse 15. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. They did that. They chose to not see. See, ignorance is bliss. These people don't want to see the truth. So he goes, you don't want to see the truth? I'll just teach you in parables then. And you can figure it out. If you really want to know the truth, you'll, you'll discover it. You'll dig. You'll pray. You'll ask me to explain it. If you really want to know, you'll meet me after the service and ask questions. That's basically what Jesus is saying. Isn't that what the disciples did? Mm -hmm. See, people who really want to know, will, will, they won't stop till they figure it out. They've got to get an answer from God. Jesus is looking at their hearts, and he's going, these people don't really want to know. Why cast pearls before swine? Now, we're not good judges of hearts, okay? <laughs> we're not Jesus. I want to be Christ-like, but I'm not God, okay? I can't discern people's minds. I can't read their minds. You know, I'm thinking of that, that uh, time where he was in Simon the Pharisee's house and he reads his mind and answers his thoughts. Yeah, I'm not... I can't do that. We can read people's countenances and things like that. We can kind of see... Uh, where they're at and, and different things. We can make guesses. 
and, and Jesus even told us, don't cast your pearls before swine. And I think we've got to use discernment. Be careful how we apply that. But he said, this people's heart is wax grows, their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Wow. They'd be saved. They've done this to themselves. They decided they didn't want to see. They decided they didn't want to hear. They are becoming what he talked about. The hard-packed soil. That's what they're becoming. Really, he's being fair. They chose ignorance because they thought that would be blissful. But then he goes on, he says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Johnny asked me the other day, Oh, I hope she don't mind me sharing this. I mean, I think, that, I think this crosses all of our minds from time to time. But she asked me, she said, Joe, are we right about things? Are we right about the different stands we take and things like that? Are we right? I believe so. I believe so. And uh, she, she, said, she just said, you know, because you watch all these people out here, and they seem to be doing good. Like they seem to be well off. These people who aren't living for the Lord. And she would she wasn't serious, okay? She was just we were just having a conversation. And uh, I know exactly what she means. Because you look at worldly people and it looks like they've got it all together, don't it? That's a mirage. That's a mirage. It's fake. It's a... Uh, it's uh, it's like that movie Shakiest Guy in the West where he's, he's water, water, I need water. He's walking across the desert and he keeps seeing this little lake and he keeps diving into it and it's just sand. It's a mirage. It's not, it's, they're not really okay. Half of them are really miserable. Brother Bob was telling me one time he was driving through Atlanta and all these beautiful, nice houses and all this stuff and, and you know, nice cars parked in the driveway and then you find out uh, the guy is working three jobs. The, the wife is working two jobs just to pay the mortgage. Just to keep up with the Joneses. Well, they're, not, they're not okay. Yeah. Here's, here's what I'm getting at. I believe we're seeing clearly. I believe we're hearing clearly. And I believe a lot of people just in general are just closing their eyes and tuning out their ears. I don't believe everybody is. But I believe a lot of people are. I believe the majority of people in Jesus' day did that. I believe the majority of people did not listen to Him and did not want to see Him. I think we're getting close to the same stuff. I think they did the same thing in Noah's day. I cannot imagine preaching 120 years the same message all the time. It's going to rain. Didn't it rain, 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 children? No, I've got to quit. But the same message all the time. It's going to rain. 120 years. Eight people. I'd have to say the majority of people shut their eyes and turned off their ears. Yeah, that's right. And it's really sad to watch people do this. And I, I hate it in our families. I hate it with friends. Uh, I can remember a, a friend uh, from high school that I, I went to school with. And I remember uh, after uh, uh, surrendering to the Lord, and I was going to go witness to this friend. And, I, you know, I had it all planned out. It was going to go great. Brother Mark, I mean, it was going to, like, I had all, like you were saying, it's such, I had all these facts about creation and all this stuff. I had, I had a plan. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a plan, okay? Nothing wrong with having a plan on what you're going to say. I argued with him, I think, for two hours. Finally, at the end of that, I said, you just don't want to see, dude. 
You're just not ready to see. It doesn't mean that he never will. It doesn't mean that he can't get his eyes open. The Lord will have to do it. <clears throat> It'll take the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, like I'm saying Sunday, it's not that the hard-packed soil can't be broken up. It will take the Holy Spirit of God to till that ground. Yeah. It may take something really bad coming into their life to do it, but it'll be good for them in the long run if the Lord breaks that, that hard-packed ground. I just remember looking at my friend and saying, I'm not getting anywhere with you, am I? He just, he had all kinds of just, he, he was, just didn't want to see. That's what it, really what it boiled down to. It, you know, oh, well, well, Jesus has one dad in Matthew, and then he has another dad in Luke. That was one of his comebacks. And uh, I said, well, one of the guys, the guy in Luke, isn't that his uh, father-in-law? That's Mary's dad. Uh, yeah. And uh, it, it might have been Joseph had two separate dads. That might have been what it was. And, it, and, and that was what his comeback was. Yeah, there's an error right there in the Bible. I said, well, one of them's his father-in-law. He's like, well, yeah, but. Okay, right there, he just doesn't want to see. That's all it was. Didn't matter how it didn't matter if you answered his questions. He didn't want to see. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Listen, if you're saved, you've got the Holy Spirit of God showing you things. He is opening your eyes. He is opening your your ears so you can hear the screaming baby. <laughs> I had to, I had to. Why parables? I believe to accomplish two things in closing. To conceal from those who either don't want to or aren't ready to see. To conceal from people who don't want to see. To reveal to people who do. That's why parables. To conceal from people who don't want to see. And to reveal to people who do. Because if you really want to see, you'll look. You'll dig. You'll find out. You'll, you'll try to find out everything you can. You'll try. Isn't that, isn't that the case? I can remember growing up in church, being around the Bible all the time, hearing it quoted all the time, hearing the stories all the time, not really caring. Not, you know, I cared a little bit. And I retained, you know, I retained a good amount of it. But I didn't really get it until I wanted to. And when you want to, boy, how did the Holy Spirit of God will come in and He'll start showing you things. And you'll start to get it. Right? If you, I, I'm amazed at all these guys, Josh McDowell, Anthony Flew, uh, Lou Wallace, just off the top of my head, those are my favorites. But all these guys who were, boy, uh, they grew up not really believing in God, not believing in Jesus, and they were going to disprove Him. And so they, they were like, you know what, I'm going to really look for answers. And they went and looked for answers became Christians. Because they actually opened up and said, you know what, if this is true, then I'll believe it, but I don't believe it is. I'm going to disprove it. And they wound up being disproved themselves. I'm glad they were big enough to admit they were wrong. All of a sudden, God took... Saul of Tarsus didn't believe in Jesus at all. Didn't want to, what, what, did, what did Jesus have to do? He had to make the scales fall from his eyes so he could see. And after that, he got it, didn't he? You can, boy, howdy. He, in, 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 his, in his letters, he, he's quoting from the Old Testament. And he's going, do you see Christ? Do you see Jesus in the Old Testament? Boy, he knew his Old Testament. But all of a sudden, he started to understand it. Because he wanted to. That's why parables. I believe that's why Jesus taught in parables. If I could say it in a nutshell. To conceal truth from those who didn't really want to see it. And to reveal truth to those who did. That's why parables. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much.